It is November 3rd, 2015. There is a G1 geomagnetic storm in effect. You can go to the Space Weather Prediction Center, also known as spaceweather.gov. Also check out spaceweather.com. Give your email and sign up for the alert when there's a magnetic field fluctuation, geomagnetic storm. Uh, they are expecting it to potentially get up to a G3. It came a little late. This is coming out of time. There's a massive sunspot as well, still erupting from the sun. It's been going on since uh, before Halloween. And so it's something of interest as well. Some of the sunspots are as large as full on continents. We're at the tail end of the solar cycle, although people aren't really saying that. They're not really talking about solar maximum and its effects. They're just talking about these individual solar flares. Uh, the White House has put out a uh, press release that they have a plan to deal with the catastrophic grid down situation. It's, it's hardcore centralization, by the way, of power, media, industry. It's like, and, and of course, there are some people that are concerned that maybe they would fake a solar flare or something like that uh, to take over society. But it doesn't take away from the fact that the possibility of it actually happening does exist. And so there's governments around the world that want to prepare for this, that want to have the upper hand. Also, got to remember, when a solar flare hits, it could affect one part of the planet more than the other side of the planet. Unless, of course, you think that we live on a flat Earth. Then, of course, yes, everything would be the same. But uh, dealing with, you know, say, for example, if North America was hit and China wasn't, would China and Russia have the upper hand militarily to uh, move a few things forward? It's possible. Is that something that concerns the Pentagon, a solar flare slash EMP type event, be it from the sun to the military? Yes, they're freaked out, officially, on record. Other governments have made preparations for such an event. It's not just the United States that has been investing in underground bunkers and things of that nature. So back to uh, solar flares, we're at the completion of the solar cycle, and I wanna talk a little bit in this video about the effects, the positive effects that I see. And one of them is creativity, the creative, um, uh, the, the documentary filmmaking, art, literature, things relating to spoken word, especially when it comes to activism or uh, uh, a deeper understanding of what's going on in the world. Alternative media is just like one word, one, one, it's, it's a terminology for something far more broad when it comes to sharing truth. And so uh, it seems like there are these cycles of truth sharing. I saw like a wave of it. Not only that, but interest in it. Uh, in 2004, 2005, uh, I feel like I got somewhat of a positive uh, welcome when I started my Access TV show. And things are very different in the latter part of the cycle. So there's a period in time where I've seen mankind and womankind much more receptive. And so... I think we could be going back into that kind of a time here as we complete the cycle and we go into next year. It doesn't mean that there aren't other major events taking place on the planet. I'm just merely speaking to people being more receptive to knowledge and truth and teachings. And this is a time where a lot of teachings and Gnostic knowledge, other forms of knowledge, it, it's emerging. It's like it's coming forward with these sunspots. now. On the topic of large sunspots, super large sunspots, I think a lot about brain growth and the idea of humans having a super brain. And some people talk about having headaches when we have these geomagnetic storms, and that could be caused by brain growth or stimulation within the brain. In the brain, we have concentration of magnetite, and that's what allows birds and pigeons to navigate. And I feel that, that plays a huge role in why you, you see a lot of human beings moving from point A to point B during these periods where you have solar flares and things of that nature. And the geomagnetic storm is, is more active. Not to mention more earthquakes. I also noticed that the, uh, the wind is uh, moving a lot faster. I've noticed this in Portland. I've noticed this here in Colorado. Here in... Um, this part of Colorado, by the way, it's it feels closer, like it's a closer connection to the earth for me and places like Portland 
and other major cities where you have a high concentration of unnatural magnetic fields, cell phone towers, smart meters, it's not good for the human body because you have electromagnetic pollution. When you have a lot of energy coming from the sun, it's magnifying the unnatural magnetic energy caused by those machines. It's magnifying it. It's boosting the unnatural effect. It's also hotter in the city because of all the concrete. It's a little different when you're close to the trees. So remember that the sun is an amplifier, it's a booster. If you need to take some time today to ground or step away from things that cause stress, then maybe you should do that. But uh, you can stay on top of things at spaceweather.gov. It looks like it is subsiding. But I also have noticed that there is, whenever there's solar flares and geomagnetic storms, people are more tapped in to a lot of things. So I see more articles come out about solar flares, like this one about the White House preparing for a, for a catastrophic event. That doesn't have anything to do with this last solar cycle. I mean, solar flare. It's just that the news is coming out on solar flares during a period where we had a large solar flare and a geomagnetic storm. In other words, people are thinking about the sun. It, it enters their consciousness. They don't know why things about the sun and news about the sun is entering their consciousness, but it enters their consciousness when the sun is more active, even if they don't know that the sun is more active. I'm Alex Hansler, signing off for November 3rd, 2015.